Hello again, this is Dr. Kevin Connors, session nine of our cancer class. And we were talking about uh, different things to do with cancer. Today, I'm going to talk about things that, that uh, literally put the brakes on your immune system, and that is chronic stress, or even acute stress for that matter. But I'm going to give you some statistics on chronic stress and what stress does to you. First of all, stress initiates the sympathetic nervous system. So from a, from a neurological standpoint, you have two uh, pieces of your nervous system. You have your voluntary and your involuntary. Your voluntary, I want to lift my leg. Your involuntary, meaning you don't have to think about your heart to beat. You don't have to know what your liver does, and it still does it. That involuntary nervous system is called your autonomic nervous system. So think of it as your automatic nervous system. Now, the purpose of the autonomic nervous system is to control all your organ function. The autonomic nervous system is split into two opposing sides. One is your sympathetic nervous system, and one is your parasympathetic nervous system. Your parasympathetic nervous system controls all your digestion, your sexual function, your detoxification, your immune system, uh, your rest, relaxation, helps wash your brain while you're sleeping, helps increase lymph flow. Everything you can think of that would be positive is your parasympathetic nervous system. Now, it doesn't mean your sympathetic is a bad thing, but it's only supposed to be for a purpose. So your parasympathetic controls all those good things. Your sympathetic controls the fight or flight mechanism. Some people call it the fight, flight, or freeze mechanism because that's what can happen with your body when you encounter a giant crisis. So when you have a perceived crisis or a real crisis, it doesn't make any difference. So if a polar bear jumps out in front of you or you think there's a polar bear out in front of you, you will have a sympathetic nervous system response. That would be actually normal. So that polar bear jumps out in front of you. You need a sympathetic nervous system response. Well, guess what happens with a sympathetic response? You shut down detoxification. You shut down digestion. Shut down any sexual function. We don't need to reproduce. We got a polar bear in front of us. We don't need to detox. We got a polar bear that is going to eat us. Who cares if I'm going to die of mercury poisoning in five years? I'm going to get eaten by a polar bear right now. Everything parasympathetic is shut down. Your sympathetics kick in. So you, you're, that dilates your eyes so you can see where to run away, shunts blood to your extremities, increases your blood pressure, opens up your bronchial tubes, and you are able to flee and to survive. So it's everything that's involved in a survival mechanism. Now the problem is, is that we live in a culture where we are sympathetic dominant. We live in a culture where, though we are not running away from polar bears, our bodies are acting like we're running away from a polar bear all the time. We're in this chronic, ramped up stress environment. So our brain is firing a sympathetic nervous system response all the time. This little slide shows a cute little drawing about a, a man and a woman there, and it says that stress of cancer alone causes a sympathetic response. That is exactly true. So you don't go into the doctor and hear, yes, you have, sorry, but this lump in your breast, we found it to be cancerous. It's stage two, and we need to do surgery and radiation. I don't think anybody's response has been, cool, that's just fantastic. All right, when do we get started? This is going to be fun. What an experience. I'm always up for an adventure. No, you end up with a fear-based sympathetic response. You wouldn't be normal if you didn't. This is a survival mechanism that's going on, except running away from a polar bear is not going to help the situation. So every chemical that you make in your body during a sympathetic response is completely anti to what you really need in order to heal from a chronic disease like cancer. So that even the, the knowledge of your cancer and trying to come to a decision in your treatment program and you having fear about that is making enough chemicals that is fueling the growth of your cancer. 
So when we tell our patients over and over again, you have got to get a handle on the stress part. You have to get a handle on the fear. You cannot think that you are going to heal from uh, from uh, cancer growing in your body and you being in a state of terror. It's just not going to work. You have to get a handle of this. That's why we like to do some spiritual counseling here too. If you don't aren't able to turn this over to the Lord and know that you are in His hands and you know that you know that you know that where you're going when you die, then you can never have total peace about this. That's why the Bible is very clear that we are supposed to have a peace that passes all understanding. That means in the midst of trouble, we are going to have trouble. That is a promise in Scripture that we're going to have trouble, but we have to know that he overcame that trouble. Chronic stress. Here's a nice, cool uh, diagram how prostate cancer could be any cancer that we're talking about. And that itself, knowledge of the cancer causes stress. Well, stress feeds the prostate cancer. And on the top of that diagram, it says HPA, that's your... Um, uh, hypothalamic pituitary access, so it, that stress is felt in that part of the brain, deep in the brain where your pituitary gland, gland is, and your hypothalamus, what stimulates your pituitary gland, then stimulates your adrenal production and literally shuts down apoptosis, so it causes the cancer to continue to grow. So chronic st stress also increases what's called Th2 immune system. It's the uh, it's the side of the immune system that makes antibodies. So that's not the side of the immune system that you need to kill cancer. You want a, a hyper Th1 response to kill cancer cells. So uh, chronic stress tips your the balance of your immune response that should be a balanced Th1, Th2. And when you're fighting disease, you wanted a little hyper Th1 when you're dealing with cancer. It tips it into the balance of a hyper Th2. One of the reasons why I say that all cancer is has an autoimmune component, and all people, their cancer, they are Th2 dominant at the site of the cancer. That's why the cancer, one of the reasons why the cancer is allowed to continue to grow. Chronic stress increases suppressor T cell production by the tumor itself. So the tumor itself, as it grows, S starts to secrete its own suppressor T cells that starts destroying your immune cells. That's not good. It causes lymphocyte apoptosis, meaning that your own lymphocytes, your own white blood cells that are trying to kill the cancer start to die because it upregulates the death lignin, uh, the FAS death, death lignin in the, in the lymphocytes themselves. So it increases the death of your Th1 cells. It's creates a Th2 imbalance, uh, dominance at the site of the cancer, and it helps your uh, cancer cells secrete their own immune cells that kill your immune system. It's a huge negative cycle that you have to break. Chronic stress increases the growth and proliferation of metastasis of cancer through this and other things. It also does one other really bad thing. It increases what's called VEGF production. VEGF is vascular endothelial growth factor. It's actually a chemical that's made in a chronic stress situation. It's made in other situations too, but um, to, for the sole purpose of increasing vascularity. Think of think of it this way. Well, why would why would chronic stress increase vascularity to a tissue? Well, if I'm in a chronic stress state, I'm having to run away from polar bears all the time. It would be better to increase my vascularity into my heart, increase my vascularity into muscle tissue. So I have an increased blood flow to that area. So next time I will be able to run away from that that uh, polar bear even better. But um, when we're dealing with cancer, so I already have cancer and now I have chronic stress, I, you do not want to increase vascular endothelial growth factor and vascularize a cancer. So if I vascularize a tumor, if my body will va increase growth of new blood vessels into a tumor, you are increasing that tumor's ability to feed. And when that tumor can feed, then it can, it just grows 
you know, exponentially. So the biggest thing that you could do to get rid of your cancer is to get a handle on your chronic stress. You have to deal with this terror. You have to settle in your heart that you're okay with the results of whatever treatment you're choosing, regardless of what the results are. And to the degree that you're able to settle with those results is to the degree that you're going to decrease all the production of all these chemicals that are going to feed your cancer. It's really hard for me to do all sorts of things from a nutraceutical standpoint and from a rife standpoint to help this person with cancer when they come in to me every time and they're in just like terror all the time. Uh, it's like you might as well be pouring gasoline on your cancer cells because that's literally what's happening. Uh, some statistics, breast cancer risk doubled after marriage issues, divorce issues, relationship issues. Uh, severe stress with uh, minimal social support increased uh, breast cancer risk um, occurrence ninefold. Uh, breast cancer increases, cancer increases after chronic depression too. So emotional situations just put all this negative chemicals that feed cancers and you, you, this is something you need to get counseling. You need to seek outside help. If you have relationship issues, you need to get counseling with this. You have to get in a safe place. You need to be in a situation where you, you can be at peace with what's going on. Um, Psalm 56 says, When I'm afraid, I will trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust. I will not be afraid. What can mortal man do for me? Uh, do to me. And you could you could change mortal man and you can say anything that this world has. What can it do to me? Um, now the beauty of this verse is that it talks about, it doesn't say that I will never be afraid when I'm a believer. And it doesn't mean that I'll never go through struggles. And it doesn't mean that I'm never going to have fear and I'm never going to have stress and I'm never going to worry about the future and I'm never going to worry about what's going to happen to my kids. It says when I'm afraid. It just is honest. It says that I am afraid. We're not talking about not being human. We're not talking about uh, not being honest with what's going on inside your heart. But we're talking about being honest and laying it on the table. This scares me to death. I am really worried about this and being and laying it out there so that you can deal with it now so you can see it and you're not stuffing it. This scares me. I'm worried about it. What if this happens? What if I die? What if I suffer this way? What is going to happen to my kids? And, and uh, that is the, the sanest way to deal with it. I do not think it's healthy for a person even if they come to us and they're a believer and they start saying well god's going to take this away so i'm not going to even talk about it anymore god's just taking this cancer away and i don't even have the cancer and it's gone and in one sense um that positive um, outlook can be healthful because um the person is focused on the good and that's what we want but in another sense, it can be a crutch because we're not honestly dealing with the humanness of what's going on in our life. It is never fun to struggle. It is never fun to, to have pain in our life. It is never fun to have a serious diagnosis. And I don't think it's healthy to stick our head in the sand and pretend that it doesn't occur. We need to be honest with ourselves. I'm scared. I don't know what to do. I need help. This is where we need that interdependence of family and loving relationships to come around us and be that support system for us. In the uh, program, you'll see a download of a PDF that's called My Hope Heart Condition Workbook. That heart condition workbook is there for you, regardless of whether you have cancer or a loved one is struggling with some other disease or you have just some chronic fatigue. It is super helpful. Because our belief here is that you cannot bury emotions and you can't hide them behind some ultra-spiritual perspective that you might have. You have to be honest and human. And there's all sorts of things that has happened to us over the course of our lifetime that can set us up for just deep, hidden emotional scars. 
and it can be something that um, our parents did with no ill intent but it's the way my six-year-old mind accepted that that my father said or my mother said or my teacher did um, so it's not about casting blame it's not about um, being the victim Matter of fact, it is absolutely not about being the victim, but it's about taking responsibility and going, okay, where are my deep hidden hurts? Where are my deep seated emotions that I maybe stuffed years and years ago? This heart condition workbook will help you uncover them. There's several tests that you want to take through that. Work through it. Be honest. Have a time that it's just quiet. If you have kids, do it when they're in bed. Do it when it's just you and the Lord. And just ask the Holy Spirit to reveal answers to you. To reveal maybe hidden things in your heart that you haven't dealt with. It's very common that some root causes of all sorts of diseases that we have um, have emotional ties. Matter of fact, I would argue that every uh, disease that we have, every illness we have, every, every problem that we're going through has some deep spiritual or emotional connection to it that we may not even be aware of in, the, in, our, um, in our current reality. But, uh, so we need to ask the Holy Spirit to bring that out, to lay it on the table. This workbook is meant to help open up those doors. So go through this workbook fill out those problems it's very self-explanatory take your time to go through that and uh and see what god has for you and if there's people you need to forgive you need to forgive them if there's people you need to ask for forgiveness from you need to ask for forgiveness from people if there's things that you did wrong in your life is there sin that's that's covered up that you haven't dealt with that you haven't repented of that you haven't laid on the table before God because you're too ashamed of um, he already knows about it so lay it on the table he already loves you he's already forgiven you if you were the last person on earth and Jesus came today he would still go to the cross and die so that he could be reconciled with you and you could spend eternity with him forever and ever I truly believe that that's how much he loves you so uh, go at it with that understanding that you are already loved, you are already forgiven, and he's just beckoning you to climb up on his lap so he can hold you and tell you everything's going to be all right. All right, we're going to talk a lot about this um, in the My Quiet Place. So, uh, uh, but I did need to touch on it when we're talking about cancer here. Hope this is beneficial, and I'll see you next week.